So we'll start the meeting. The uh, <clears throat> January 17, 2012 meeting of the Glasstown Sewer Commission. To the far right is Mike Trank from Hoyle Tanner, Dave Pierce, Selectman, Jim Bouchard, Commissioner, Steve Crean, Commissioner, Kathy Hooten, Commissioner, <coughs> Helen Noyes, Administrative Assistant, Mike Yurgo, Sewer Superintendent. And I guess we'll start off. We have someone here from Highland Village. Highland Village, yes. My name's um, Carol Fry. I'm the property manager for Highland Village. <coughs> I'm basically here um, just to get an education on how, um, how we're built and um, why we're built the way that we are. Um, my questions um, came about because we were confused because we pay a sewer bill to the town of Gosstown, and then we get water bills from the city of Manchester. And Ellen said that that's caused a lot of confusion in the past with, with other folks. Um, in June, I learned about um, Manchester Waterworks offering a deduct meter for um, so that you know residents or commercial businesses aren't, um, I guess, in short, aren't paid or don't have to pay for water um, that that goes into the ground that doesn't go into the sewer system, like for irrigation, for example. We have a huge irrigation system because we have such a big property, um, and in the summertime we use tons of water to irrigate all of our grass, and then uh, we use tons of water to fill our swimming pool, pretty much on a daily basis because of the splash out. Um, so I contacted Ellen back in June and she said that um, the deduct meter is impossible because um, we're part of Gosstown, not part of Manchester. And I guess we're at that area where we're kind of in the middle because we're getting water from Manchester and then we're on the sewer. Um, can, can I just, I don't mean to interrupt. No, you, that's, but, fine. Well, well, that's fine. I think it'd be less confusing if we just sort of, you know, take them one at a time, if, if you will. In a lot of towns, or like in the city of Manchester, or the town of Londonderry, or Bedford, yeah. and some other towns, they build a sewer off the water meter. So if someone has a lot of irrigation and they're being built off the water meter for the sewer, you know, they just, they just take the, the meter reading off the water bill and then multiply the, the number of units times the rate and how they get their sewer bill. Okay. Okay. In your case, we're not reading the water meter. You're paying a flat rate. You're, you know, we estimate, you know, each uh, apartment is 125 gallons, uh, two bedroom is 300 gallons, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could install a deduction to meter, but it wouldn't do anything for you because your water bill's not going to go down because you're still using the water. And your sewer bill's not going to change because we don't bill off the water meters. Some of the other towns and cities do some, you know, some, we bill a flat rate. You know, a lot of towns do it the way we do it. And we're not the only one, but there's, there's, you know, two or three or four or five different ways you can do it. Probably the two most common is flat rate or off the water meter. Okay. We go with a flat rate. And one of the reasons we do that is because we have three water companies that supply water to Gostown sewer customers. In Panadville, it's a Manchester Water Works, so that there's one water company. They book, they bill, uh, I believe, quarterly. In the center of town, or you know, the village, if you will. Yeah. That's the uh, Gostown Village Precinct. That's a separate standalone water company that uh, you know bills the pretty much everyone in the village it you know it goes out to past Parker station it goes down Elm Street and it goes up High Street then in Grassmere and bills quarterly thank you okay that bills <laughs> quarterly I'm glad you said that because I thought that was I thought it was twice a year but it's it's okay yeah. okay but that's quarterly and then there's the twice, uh, twice a year is the actual rate the, the in the quarters in between are estimated. Okay. Okay. So, but, 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 okay. 
And then in uh, Grassmere, there's the uh, Grassmere Village Water Precinct, or I'm not even sure what it's called. You may write the Grassmere. The Grassmere, Grassmere, Water. Grassmere, Grassmere, Grassmere Water Village Precinct. Water Precinct. And I believe, do they supply the water like the Medford Farms? And yes. No, they don't. So they supply the water for the two <coughs> retirement communities and whatever else, and they have, I don't know, three or 400 customers, something like that. Yeah, probably. So there's... Which comes from Manchester. Yes. Which comes from Manchester. So there's, there's three different water companies, and there's also some residents, you know, have their own water supply. They have a, you know, they have a well and the wells aren't meted so we've tried in the we've tried once or twice in the past to to convert to using the water meter information versus using the flat rate and uh, could never i don't know get it to work i guess it'd be a real short explanation but that's okay. uh, so that sort of answers that part of it okay so um the rate of the um, hundred dollars per treatment unit. Um, how is that? Is that that's determined by the state or by the town or? The state puts out a chart. It's called the. Uh, Which I did get. Ellen did for me. Right, and that's uh, that's your standard design chart. Uh, this chart used uh, anytime anyone designs a septic system, they use that. A lot of towns build their sewer off of that. Uh, some towns build their sewer accessibility fees, which is a kind of a connection fee. They bill off of this. That that's real common. So that's and you've seen the chart. For example, a one bedroom is estimated 325 gallons per day. Two or more bedrooms per apartment 150 gallons per day. And you know, there's a thing for camps, caterers, church, country clubs, so on and so forth. There's maybe I don't know. So does 40, 40, 50 categories or whatever it is. This is you know, you walk yeah. no copy this, but yeah, that's how we start is by this and then we figure out, you know, how many units you have and then it's currently a hundred dollars a unit of four. Okay. Um our our bill currently is is twelve thousand one hundred dollars. And um, so when I went to, f to figure out how you came up with the figure, I went through and used this chart um, with, you know, like you said, the one, a one bedroom is 225 gallons per day. Um, I, but I didn't come up with the 12-1 12, 12 figure. And I came up with the 12-1 figure just using a standard 450 gallons per day times 122 units. 450 gallons per day is what to you. <clears throat> so the figure that I came up with, we have um, five studio apartments. We have 55 one bedrooms. So that's that would be 60 apartments at 225 gallons per day. And then we have another 60 two bedroom apartments. That would be another, um, that would be 300 gallons per day for those 60 apartments. We have a single family home, which is a three bedroom unit. So um, I figured that at the, that's at 450 gallons per day. What and was then, the last one that you just said? You said 62 bedrooms and after that, what did you say? Six, and then a one four, uh, three bedroom house. We have what? it on the tax okay. code as one four bedroom home. Yeah, the- um, Apartment in house. Yeah, that's not any longer. Um, that was probably when Ben Gamache owned it. Okay. Um, and then we have the clubhouse building or my office, um, which I just stuck in there. It's 450, which I'm assuming that you guys do too. So that's how I came up with the 12,100. Um, Based on using 450 times all the money units? Yeah, so I'm. I'm I'm wondering, um, you know, why the 450 is being used instead of the chart, unless I did my math wrong. Well, it should go by the chart. Are you, are you saying that you have I came one up, bedroom studios that you're being charged 450 gallons for, which charging you one unit? To my knowledge, yes. Um, so 
we should be being char we should be according to the chart we should be charged seven thousand two hundred dollars not twelve thousand one hundred dollars um i have a, ch a sheet which i did out the math for you if you'd like me to give you the sheet i'd like to see the sheet uh, yeah I, I just did it out and i'm coming up to about 71.33 i got 71.3 treatment units Based on what I have on the tax base right here, so and which is what you have, other than the, the bedroom, you know, this shows a one four bedroom apartment in house, yeah, it's three bedroom, weird. plus this doesn't recognize the clubhouse. So, so yeah, yeah. Your, you know, her counts are right in the ballpark based yeah. on the chart. Three bedroom, thank you. Okay, I, don't need yeah, it anyway. I have 71, I have 71 not included the clubhouse. Right, not right. yeah, exactly. <coughs> and, uh, which is substantially under the 1200. 1220. Um, the clubhouse, uh, like a standard clubhouse. Uh, how, how many bathrooms do you have in the clubhouse? There's a men's and a ladies. Okay. Which is basically just used for staff. But well, wasn't originally done was any student, any any apartment was equal to one treatment unit. Any well, that's one what I'm trying unit. to remember. Way back one treatment when, unit is equal to one living unit. Yeah, that's what we originally did was you know one treatment unit, one apartment, one two bedroom, one single bedroom, one studio was equivalent to a you know a living unit. A, a living, living unit. unit. A living unit is defined as 450 gallons per day, which is based on a three three bedroom home. That's how we originally got this established way back in the mm -hmm. old. Well, the chart that was given to me up in the corner, it's got a handwritten um, little note, and it says divided by 450 gallons per day for one treatment unit. Yep. Um, <coughs> Did you get a copy? Yeah, she did pass okay. out a copy. Right copy. Did you so then my, my other... Um, argument to try and get our bill lower um, is we went through our water bills to actually see how much usage um, and I converted them I converted the gal um, the CCF to gallons to find out how many gallons of water um, we're using per apartment and I did the last year of um, of bills and we're averaging under a hundred dollar, a hundred gallons of water per day per apartment. So well, that's that's, that's going to be typical of, of anyone that gets a sewer bill. If they convert, you know, the units into the actual meter readings. The meter readings always going to be lower. Substantially lower. We hear that. Oh. I mean, we we'll, we'll hear that all the time. What we could do is we can say, you know, a treatment unit is. Uh, you know, say right now a, a treatment unit is 450 gallons, yeah. and it's $100 a quarter. We, you know, if uh, you were only using, if everyone was using 300, we could say, okay, we're still going to use 450, but instead of $100, it's $150. You know, we still got to, you know, we still got to break even, so to speak, and that's just that's just typical of everybody in town, you know. That we can't really do anything for you. This other thing, I think we can do something for you. That would be excellent. Is the clubhouse available for parties? Occasionally, okay. yeah. Um, it's there if um, if a resident wants to have a, a get together. Um, it probably gets used about once a month okay. for a party. Uh, one thing is, you know, maybe it's possible that, you know, this chart was adopted, what, 1990 we adopted it. Maybe the state make, made a change that, uh, you know, we didn't, we weren't aware of. The other thing is, I think in the past, some people came in with accessory apartments and we charged them half a unit, didn't we? I mean, isn't that? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Except accessory. Less than 
So that would be our studio apartments. Your studio is less than 650 square feet. Yeah, they're I think that was, that was to be enjoined onto a normal house, I think. That's where we have that. Yeah, room. it has to be an apartment and an accessory dwelling unit are right. entirely different. Yeah, not the ex yeah, the accessory. An accessory dwelling unit cannot have a kitchen. I think we can evaluate. All right. Why don't we do? Why don't we do this? I'll make a motion to uh, <clears throat> turn this over to Mike Yergo to have him go through it just to check the math and make sure we're not missing anything. And the uh, one one of the next bills going out in March. March first. March first. And have him. Uh, Report back to us at the next meeting as far as what he finds. And a, an adjustment is, uh, if an adjustment is justified, we'll adjust it. Yeah. Yeah. Adjustment is warranted, we'll approve it then. And, and if it is, we'll make it effective March 1st, though? That's correct. Is right. That what we, is that the train of thought here? Yeah, there's no, you know, there's no going backwards. As a matter of fact, uh, under state law, you can't can't go backwards either way. If you were underpaying, or you know, if you put, you know, you can't make it there's, there's no going backwards. It's just going forward. So, okay. You know. Why don't someone make a motion on there? Just to I make a. I make a motion. I thought you already made the motion. Uh, yes. I I make a motion okay. to uh, second. review. Uh, have Mike Yergo review uh, the figures and come back to us with a recommendation uh, as the to recommendation what, an, as what, a, what an adjustment would be that would be implemented on March 1st. So that is the motion. We only have one motion. Then. Okay, I'll second it. All in favor? I'll give you a good year. Would it do that? Do we have yeah. Okay. He started a motion. You made a motion, so I'm oh, sure I thought he said he wanted a motion. Yeah, the look. Her, I withdraw my first. I guess to do everything correctly, and we're voting on her motion. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you made. I that. asked you to. I got a, I got a little confused. It started with my mistake. All right. Thank you for your time. Right. Thanks, Carol. And thank you. And I will um, pass along the decision to to Carol before the yeah. bill goes out. We need to check our ordinances too. Okay. Yeah, he comes in with something. We'll have to look at what he sees, and then uh, if she wants to come, she's more than yeah, welcome. I don't I'll think plan it's. Yeah, I'll to come to. You know. Okay. 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 I believe it's February 14th. Okay. Valentine's Day. Yeah. I know. Nice. I believe it is. Nobody rescheduled. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to bring flowers or something. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Okay. I lost my agenda. Oh, here we go. Get a phone. Oh, yes, I have all of them. No. Nope. Oh, here we go. There you go. You got it. Okay. Is there to do the schools first since Fred is here? And then we have, so we, have, we have one other per Wait, person from the Mr. public. Mr. Russo there. Take care of the public. Greg, Greg Russo? Yeah. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, my brother and I own um, a free family at 7 Roosevelt Street, and um, I'm definitely not as well prepared as uh, the first woman here was, but um, we wanted to review our sewer bill. Um, it's been a flat rate. Of, we purchased the building in October of 06, and it's been a flat rate of $100 per month. And um, I just wanted to gain some more information as to how uh, that was ascertained and to make sure that we're on track and we're being built correctly. Uh, I guess the first question is how many bed bedrooms do you have? We have, um, I, I guess we might classify it as a, a studio apartment in the basement. Um, it could also be in one of those accessory. Um, well, the prime function is a multifamily yeah. home? Yes. Okay, so there wouldn't be an accessory then. Do we have okay. his car, Ellen? Yes. 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 We should have his car. I have a 
Yeah. Next one. Yeah. Right. I guess right yeah. behind the uh, five. The total bedrooms would be six so then, if that's. So what do you just have with the picture? That's, oh, that's a different picture. Take mine. Yeah. That's, that's Church Street. That's the building. Yeah. So you have a studio in the basement. Yes. Three three bedroom on the first floor. Two bedroom on the second floor. He's built 300 is it, a quarter is it, is it, for is it a three, as a three living units. That's what his bill's been. Is it a multi or a two-family? It's a multi-family. It's, multi it's a three family. I think it's assessed as a three family. So a multi? Yeah. Okay. It's also a zone commercially. I don't know if that no, that factors in. Doesn't you know, we basically look at the you know the residential you know aspect of it and uh, so let's see. So what do you end up doing? If, uh, so, uh, so what are you paying now? Three hundred dollars each quarter. Okay. As you said, hundred a month. Hundred a month. Yeah. So what was the call for the number of bedrooms on the card? You look Could be on the back. Yeah. This one doesn't. Um, if you look down. Be on the left hand column. Total bedroom. This says five, because here's... Total bedroom says five. Five or four. Right up here. Yeah, we got a yeah. Are these separate rental spaces? Yes. So basically, you've got, you've got a you know, studio in the basement. You've got a uh, three-bedroom on the first and two-bedroom. So it's, if, if you look at it, it's 2.4 treatment units. Why don't we be consistent and have Mike look at that yeah. too? Okay. okay. So I make a motion that uh, we have Mike here go review Seven Rosalind Street and return to us with his recommendations at the February meeting on February 14th. February 14th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, before I leave, could I get one of those charts that you, you all were speaking about? Um, what we're looking at the unit chart. I can. Oh, I have an extra one. I have. I do have an extra one. Yes. I have two. Yeah. I have two. I think this would be. There's another page to that. There is another page. No, this is all I need. No, that's all I need. Okay. Great. I just have page one. Just take the page one. Right. Yeah, that's actually that was just the pertinent one. Thank you, folks. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. Yep. Okay. Well, back when it was, you know, when times were better than they are now, it was only fifty dollars a quarter. I don't think people even. You know, and then back then, it's like Mike said, we a rent a apartment, or whatever, was considered a residential unit. Residential unit is defined as a, a treatment unit with three bedrooms and. Yeah, I mean that's three bedrooms and that's a treatment. Well, yeah, because that was considered, considered a three apartment building. Three apartments was three yards. Yeah, so, so that's how we used to do it. Yeah, but if you go off the chart, a studio is two hundred and twenty-five, and you know it was supposed to be going, supposed to be going off the chart for two fifty. Well, did we, did we amend our ordinance? But the ordinance says that. That is, the ordinance says that's what we one have treatment unit is equal to one living unit is equal to a treatment unit. Yes. No ordinance. So. But. That's how but there, and I, I think on multifamily, sometimes we've we've looked at things a little differently. We've, if we've done that, you know, the, that's gone sort of contrary to the uh, ordinance. The ordinance. Okay, well, let's move on and uh, let these people give their presentation so they can get out of here. All right. <laughs> You don't want to have an event here. <laughs> well, I just don't want you know people waiting while we're you know we can have a discussion Nicole, later on. Right. Nicole, you are free to go in any order you want. All right, to do is we are proposing to 
add on two building additions, one um, towards the front and then one towards the, the rear of the school. Um, the front one will be administrative in use. Uh, the rear one is just to, um, it's not to add additional classrooms or additional teachers, it's a, to add classroom space. So the amount of classrooms, right, I'm saying that right, right? Population will remain static yeah. as it is presently at 500 students in the foreseeable future, but they're administering educational programs in closets and right. other spaces, so we're creating classrooms to deliver the programs. So it's just to make the um, environment better per student, basically. We're not at, proposing to add enrollment to this, this school. Um, one of the things that we're not, um, we're not changing anything in the kitchen or cafeteria, but we are uh, rerouting the sewer, because the sewer right now goes right through that administrative uh, addition in the front. So we had to relocate it outside of it. So uh, pump station is still staying where it is. We're just going to add another manhole and um, reroute the sewer to the pump station, and the pump station goes out to uh, Maple Ave. So that's that's Maple Ave um, very quickly. Um, other things that really don't involve the sewer commission that we're doing is we're um, adding some parking spaces to the north and um, doing some revisions that the, the DPW wanted to the drainage system, including um, replacing the drainage system with deep sump catch basins and, and adding a water quality in it, um, but that's uh, different from the sewer. So if you have any questions on Maple. Well, is the building addition for additional classrooms, does that have the potential uh, later yeah. on to, to extend core space in terms of bathrooms or anything like that? Or We are adding bathrooms in those spaces. Um, what this plan doesn't show is that presently there's a modular unit out in front right now. Oh, that's where I'm wondering, yeah. And it has four classrooms, and those are being relocated into okay. the orange addition that you see on the upper half of the school. Uh, we are adding... Um, that orange addition in the upper half of the school is three stories high, and um, we um, are adding toilet facilities on each of those um, floors. Now, toilet facilities are calculated on a square foot basis for the school by code. Um, capacity. Uh, per the International Building Code is 20 square feet per student. However, the Department of Education says that for elementary school students, you can't exceed 30, you can't um, have less than 30 square feet per student. Hence, you end up with kind of a false overload of fixture count uh, within the elementary school uh, scenario. And so we are adding toilet fixtures here. However, the toilet fixtures are high efficiency flush valves at 1.28 gallons per flush uh, on the toilets and the urinals. In the administration wing, um, we are relocating the nurse's office that is presently located in the lower left corner of the existing building. Uh, and within that area, we are adding, obviously, a toilet facility within the nurse's office. Included in that is a shower, um, and there is an administrative toilet uh, just outside of the, uh, the offices. Okay. Those uh, modular classrooms, they don't have any plumbing in, do they? And how many uh, students right now do you know in that modular? How many? Do you have any idea? How many are going to relocate? I fully expect that each of the classes has at least 20 in it. There's four classes or 80 students. Um, would be my expectation. I think it's safe to say that. So you're not adding any more students, which you have? No, we're keeping the static of what you said. Mm -hmm. 
I would assume then that the, the students that are in the modular um, excuse themselves to use the facilities in the in the uh, school building. Right now, they if, go to the school building. Yeah, yeah they would probably have to be walked over by yeah. an okay. teacher's assistant or something. I remember correctly, and you go back to this again, to the state <coughs> standard, and, and, I, and I'm trying to remember. I think institutional design is based on the number of, per, on the capita, if the capita is staying the same, then there is no you know, change in discharge from the school, but I can't remember. Mike's shaking his head. Uh, I, think it's, it's, I think it's all based on the students. Pardon? It's based on students. That's what I'm saying. It's based yeah. on yeah. students. So if the cap is the same, that's yeah. why. Oh, you have And that's why if they yeah. if they Schools. if they're out there and they're walking in, they, you wouldn't realize an increase the, uh, because they day they school them. without gym or showers. You don't have showers in, right? Only one shower. Only one shower in the nurse's office. That's 15 gallons, gallons per, student. per student. So it's based on the population, the student population. Student population stays the same, so therefore we don't expect to see an influx of additional discharge from your facility. From but your but facility. my question would be, were, when, the, when the modular went in, was, this, was there any consideration to the, there being additional students? No, I know what you're saying on that. If there's 80 students out there that weren't provided, right. and so therefore there's 80 more students, which is 800 gallons per day. Well, we didn't need a discharge okay. permit, so you have no reason to come in and see us, or right. even know. Right. That's right. So we need well, to reevaluate the school. Well, they're paying in two minutes now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pay two minutes you got now. Yeah. Well, what <laughs> Kathy's point was, when they added the 80 students out of the classroom. Oh, if they didn't increase the if they didn't increase the TUs then, because it wasn't connected to a sewer, then you've been able to utilize those 80 students without a sewer increase, even though they are affect they did affect the usage. So, um, well, it, I guess we, we should just take a whole look at what the student is going to be and maybe come up with a. Well, the public public works department's going to have to. You, they're going to need a discharge permit. I well, think. they're going to need a discharge because okay. they're going to construction. So why don't you just when they submit for the discharge permit, just go through and you know make sure things are in terms. In terms of what you're proposing out there, we don't have a capacity problem. Right. We can handle it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now the discharge permit would just be for the town. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, the state wouldn't be required. Anymore. No, this won't go to state because right. I consider that a service. They want to consider that. They don't even see this one. But I'm going to talk to you about drafting at some point. Okay. All right, want to look at the, look at the other school? Anyone else said on this yeah, one? I'll set on this one. So, Bartlett's basically the same thing. We're not adding additional students. Uh, so, you going to be digging in the ground at Bartlett at all? Yes. Yeah. We have had that. Tested yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, Fred has had both geotech and environmental out there. Now we've had everyone out there. Yeah. Um, yes, we on both sites we had a geotechnical engineer for the borings. Um, on the Maple Avenue site we had some ledge and some uh, groundwater uh, <coughs> the, the admin wing. On this site, uh, we did not encounter water because the water table is substantially low. However, we did encounter was an ash dump out in the corner, uh, just beyond the existing footprint of the existing river wing. Um, on this site also, um, we have uh, two monitoring wells, um, and I am working with Aries. As I, who were the engineers um, hired to uh, monitor these wells. And as I understand, the reading was just taken around the holiday period and I have to um, get a determination on those readings. It is my understanding that they are working clean. Uh, so I think they had, I guess, a euphemism, a detergent dump or something within the monitoring wells that were becoming neutral. But I will get a... Uh, well, just keep in mind, we, I'm sure you're aware we were in the sewer line down through Mass Road the last couple of years, which is still working on. 
we ran into three different areas where there were petroleum contamination. And I'm sure you remember that school was shut down one time for six months because of hydrocarbon. They had a hydrocarbon sewer vapor intrusion into the school. And if you, you hit something, you know, planning on quick, and it can run into some money, to say the least. So, but you're obviously aware of all of that. So, but the good news is that the water table is down. Yeah, good thing. But the town yeah, everything else is up. <laughs> there, there, what, there was a soil vapor collection system that's still basically in place, except for the building yes. right. right there. So, yes, I've seen the. Okay, so sorry to interject now. Go ahead. All right. cool. what are we doing? Um, so, as far as this one goes, we are again getting rid of an auxiliary building. The auxiliary building is located currently, it's on the first page of your plans, but currently back here. It's a, a larger auxiliary building on this one. So, that is coming into um, Bartlett School. Um, and as, as far as I've heard this is a much needed um, expansion of this building because uh, the teachers really don't have the space that they need for their classrooms. Um, we are adding, we are modifying, uh, modifying the kitchen <coughs> and uh, the dishwasher room. So one of the things that this site does not have, it does not have a grease trap for the kitchen. So that's one thing that we're adding to this site. Uh, the grease trap is going to be right off of the screen island has changed to striping um, but the grease trap is right in there in that area and then a new connection out to mass road um, uh -huh. is proposed you know how big there the are, grease traps going to be there are in fact two grease traps one located within the uh, dish wash room uh, for the three pot sink and uh, the second one as um, Nicole had noted it's a uh, concrete basin out of the exterior to the building. And I think the um, Wheaton Associates designed a 750 gallon grease trap. Well, there is a formula for those too. Yeah. Yeah, and they've changed the rules on it. It should be more like, you know, yeah, that's I think I think four or five thousand gallons would be more in line with what they size really, it should they be. Really changed the rules. Yeah, on the plant size that I have. No, they're on the planning plans. So we'll have to put them on a stroll plan, so okay. 750 gallon. You might want to take a look at that. I don't just, think that's anywhere that near where it's supposed to be. It's a flow tunnel. Yeah, it's a flow tunnel. Yeah, there is a, there is a, there's a brand new formula for that. That's you know, for handling grease traps. All right. Jeff Jeff Kavan's uh, familiar with the uh, the new rules, if you will. Yeah. Jeff garbage disposal. Excuse me. Jeff garbage disposal. Garbage. Garbage disposal is in the sink. Yes, within the kitchen. Yes. yes. Okay. Again, population static or being increased. Static. Okay, you're still going to have to go through with Mike here, go on the line, just judge. Again, Mastro has capacity now. Yeah, I might have to, the only thing we have to see about is whether for a sore connection. I'm sorry? We'll have to see about a sore connection because that's fairly deep. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm... Right. And we're just going to pay Mastro the spring, so I don't think we want... Yeah, and um, Megan did bring that up. So we're, we are looking at the possibility of doing it in phases so that um, this comes in, any connections in the street would come in prior to paving. Because I think, well, I'll talk to you anyway. Though, mm -hmm. The uh, source system is that you have, that's shown existing, that was done by another engineering surveying firm originally, I don't think that's accurate. Because mm -hmm. when we did Mass Road, we found things different. Oh, okay. So. We'll have to get together anyway okay. for the project. So. Well, if they're going to do that, they're going to get out of the street before they pave it. They're going to be paving in the springtime, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. We're hoping. You know, we're going to, um, you know, we have to make sure the cars are going to be in the hazardous area, of course. Because the old gasoline's the. That's what it is? Yeah. 
That's where the plumbers under that old building are taken out. And that's where the petroleum area is. Oh, yeah. When you say it's static, you mean that there's there's no anticipated increase in students or administrative personnel in the near future. So is that is that what that term okay. So what happens what what is the potential? Do you know what the potential is for additional increase in both of these schools for student enrollment? Well, there's always potential from what I understand there okay. is discussion about a development in Pernardville adding a number of units. Uh -huh. So I mean, certainly I don't know what that would mean as far as so the downtown yeah. goes. Are you building the school if you're building it to static and you're in there's possibilities of new students coming in, are you saying that you're going to be overcrowded at this school because of the new buildings coming no. in? No, but you, so therefore you are saying that in the near future there's possibility of student I increase in student enrollment. Well, right now the, <clears throat> the school is, mm -hmm. um, I, I believe the 200 isn't how many kids they have there now, it's the 200 is their, in, their maximum allowed from enrollment. It's not um, the actual count. So I believe they have to go back and get, um, don't they have to get approval for uh, more enrollment if they get Well, we have to go through the Department of Education okay. and, and their review. I believe the actual student count right now is under 200, it's 180 something, something like that. The numbers are fluid and, and they're mm -hmm. not always constant according across the, the grades. I mean, you can have mm -hmm. someone moving into one of the apartments those triplets. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I, I think uh, the I think our school board keeps track of the actual count of students per Correct. location, so uh, on an annual basis. And it is from them that I heard that the population counts are static, you know, and they have been. Mm -hmm. Like like even an apartment, like one. Chinese. You know, a three bed, a, a three bed, a three bedroom apartment. They pay a flat rate every quarter, and the accessibility is always the same. But you could have two people in a three-bedroom right. apartment. You could have eight people, right. twelve people. You know, pick a number. It's never going to be constant and the same. But right. in terms of how we assess schools, it's based on a population base, and we usually assess them at the maximum that they're rated for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, anyone have any more questions on that? Yeah, I do. The only other question I have, and you know, getting back to the whole discussion of a new, di you know, new discharge to this location. You know, um, are you the intent is to keep the existing sewer discharge now and add this as an additional? Correct. And based on what we're trying to propose with DPW, the Board of Selectmen, and this commission, and you know, working with the contractor trying to get pavement down out there uh, on Mass Road and this being a depth, would you be? It appear, well, let me ask the question. It appears that you're doing some reconstruction in this area. Mm -hmm. Would it? Would you? might want to take back with you the consideration if it's going to prove to be a time challenge or a construction challenge to get into the new and uh, the mass road sewer is the, is the case the possibility of you know you might have to go to a pump station i don't know to get over and tie into the existing sewer that goes out now it's always a possibility. yeah just something to be or you know versus a hard and fast coming out here you've been reading my mind again though. yeah i have <laughs> your, your, your emails come your emails coming across real strong I mean, it, 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 would, it would entail that your client has to probably put in a pump station because you can't get gravity flow. I don't know. It'd have to be evaluated. But my guess is you probably couldn't get there. So, uh, And that would solve trench opening and all that. And soil contamination. Yes, soil <coughs> contamination a whole bit. Okay, we all set? So, I, so I guess you've got a great plan, what we're trying to say. Looks like work with Mike here ago. And uh, good luck to you and go forward. Thank you. Thank you. I know we're the least of you yeah, probably the, what you have to we, do. We, we do have the capacity if that's yeah. possibly what I think you're coming for is to get that okay with capacity. Well, um, the reason why we were coming is because Brian Rose felt that it was it would be good in mm -hmm. our best interest to come before you mm -hmm. and just to make sure you knew what was going on out there and get your feedback. We yeah. appreciate it. And now you got some feedback. You'd like to be part of the team. <laughs> residents of Iceland.
And Nicole, you're going to talk about the residents at Moose Club too? Yes. Okay. What's that? Present point from your own presentation. No, not that I don't like my boards. What? I don't have to turn them on or off or have electronic problems or anything. Um, so this is the residences at Edmunds Club Park uh, Road. Uh, just to let you know where this is. Um, I have talked about neighbor works before neighbor works the housing affordable yep. housing mm -hmm. yes yeah. right across the river here with the new Rite Aid over here uh, Shaw's Plaza over yeah. on um, the west and to the east the Hannaford and then this is the residence is along Moose Club Park Road rail trail actually runs right through here um, so what we're proposing is two 24 unit apartment buildings uh, with their parking spaces and utilities. The only utility that's not going to be run down this road is um, <coughs> electric. Electric, we're tying off of the poles. We've talked to the PSNH about that. But water and sewer and uh, telephone and, and cable will be running down our access and utility easement. We have a 50 foot access and utility easement that we have to fit everything in. So. Um, we have sewer. Now, I know that Mike Giergo has given comments already, and uh, we are working <coughs> on addressing those. One of the comments being adding additional manholes to get it more with underneath the road, which we are working on, on now. Um, the other thing that we are proposing is this manhole here is relatively, they invert, there's, there's two different lines. There's a line that goes a sewer line that goes here and then it kind of double backs doubles back and goes to this manhole here at a higher elevation this elevation is kind of high we'd have to raise part of the road about two to three feet um, the sewer profile that I gave here there's something wrong with it so um, we have to adjust that so that's why you were going I think we were getting different numbers but we would have to raise this a section of this two to three feet hot, higher to tie into this invert. So what we're proposing to do is add another manhole, per Mike's uh, recommendation, add another manhole, cap it shorter, and remove the existing manhole and tie into the deep manhole within Moose Park Road, um, just to get our deeper elevation, because mm -hmm. the, the, it is rel relatively deep within Moose Park Road, so we can do that. Um, it's just a little bit of extra money with this tie-in, but at least that fill, we don't have to spend the extra money on the fill. Um, with the, the calculations of this, I, I did give the calculations to Mike. Where's Rite Aid on there? Rite Aid is... Well, I'm going to pay Right down here. 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 Yeah. It's an imagination. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so... There's a. Um, the other side of the Yes. Okay. Yeah. These are the town homes okay, gotcha. that are like right is. down here, and then there's the park. Um, we did the. Uh, we did submit some calculations. What we're. What we're looking at is. Um, uh, total design flow, including infiltration of all the manholes. Well, it, it will change because the we are adding probably three more manholes so we will have to revise these calculations but um, before we, we added the three manholes we were looking at a total design flow of 12,050 gallons per day um, with the peaking factor I, uh, I think it was like 72,000 um, around there um, so basically we're here just to um, See what you think about the project and make sure this is this, we get your recommendations and uh, make sure this is what you want to see as far as the sewer goes. I guess one question is the uh, number of treatment units. They're all two bedroom apartments. How many apartments? It's 48. 48. 48 two bedrooms? 
of the apartment. Um, so 10,000 uh, of each apartment building? I no, know. on each apartment. I mean, of each apartment unit. That I don't know. What's that? It's about 11,000 square foot building. That's the, that's the footprint. Yeah. So it's, it's more like 30 something. 48 times Is this three stories? Yeah, 48 times 300. Divided by 450, 450 equals 32. Can you? So the accessibility fee would be around $16,000, right? Hmm? Well, well, if there's 48 units. I think no, wait a minute. I'm going the wrong way. It's, no, no, no. it's 100, like 150000 48 units. 48 times 32 times treatment five. units times 5,000, right? That's 240,000. But here again, you're going to go back to no, the... No, it's 48 units times 5,000. Yeah. Oh, no. No, it's... 48 two bedrooms. Well, if you're going to go back to the... You're going back to what the, what the original people were here about. If you're using, if you're using what the sorting says, one treatment unit equal to one one apartment unit. So accessibility fee would be based on the forty eight apartments. That'd be forty eight. Yeah. So between forty thousand. Five thousand. Even though these are two bedroom apartments. Yep. That's equal to if one one living unit is equal to one treatment unit. That's so ordinance. 40, and that's the, the flow. The flow is take the, the four fifty is taken out of the equation. The ordinance, if, yeah, the ordinance has continued to say that one living unit is based on a treatment unit. A treatment unit is defined as 450 gallons per day. Well, we'll have to, at the next meeting, we'll have to have the ordinance and have a discussion about this, this whole thing from top to bottom. But needless to say, it looks like we're talking about some, some real money, as they say, to connect these buildings and just make sure everybody's aware of that, right. you know? So we used a different calculation in another development. Well, we did. We did right here. Uh, uh, that was uh, me. Well, Coughlin was a standalone building. Yeah, a duplex. Well, yeah, a five-unit building. They're each individually owned. Well, that shouldn't matter as far as the. But rather than you know spinning our wheels here, let's get everything, get the ordinance, get everything lined up. Maybe we would have a workshop before the next meeting so we can uh, go over this and give intelligent answers. But that's that's the only real real thing uh, that I don't want to bring up. So as far as um, when you bring that up, will we get a letter saying what our access? Okay. <laughs> It's going to be non-negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> so just so that they can, just, just so they can uh, plan. For no, we it. let you talk, and then we go ahead and just do whatever we want to do. We never let you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, we probably you're right. We probably should have a workshop on that. Well, for what I'm hearing, right, we sort of have a conflict between one chart that we adopted. We adopted the chart for, and you know, it's also possible that there's a difference between the number of units you have to buy to buy into the system versus the number of units you actually get billed on. Those may be okay. two separate numbers too. I'm not. Uh, I think we got to sit down and get a little, a little more organized and, and go and go over the. You know, we haven't talked about this in a long time, and all of a sudden it's come up. I guess three times in the last hour. <laughs> What are you going? Are you still in front of the planning board with us? We are. Um, I'm hopefully back. Uh, well, I am back uh, January. No, sorry, February 9th in okay. front of the planning board. Um, and our next meeting is February 14th. Right. Relative to the February 9th meeting, we can tell you that the capacity does exist for the project. That we're not against the project. It's just we don't have to work out the final details of treatment units and accessibility fees. Right. And you can tell the planning board. Okay. We can certainly send them. We got room now. <laughs> we got room to take it. Yeah, we do. 
we, we, we could send a letter confirming what you right. said to wonderful. your attention to take yeah. to the planning board for mm -hmm. yes. That would be wonderful. Um, we'll work on the tribute you know, for accessibility. You can decide if you want to take calls. <laughs> Can we all set? I'm on I think a little we're all set. Myself, so. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nicole. Okay. The intermunicipal agreement. Is that something you guys want to go into executive session about? You want to do that at the end? Are you, you going to schedule up another meeting? Yeah, I think it's like. Uh, do you go for Thursday again? Yeah, I think it's a week from Thursday. This Thursday. Yeah, correct. Okay. It's not this Thursday. It's another week. It was two weeks from when the original meeting right, was. So up. the intermunicipal agreement will will be tabled until such time as we have that meeting. Okay. Okay. Slope stabilization. Uh, that's just just for uh, general information, right? That doesn't require it's done. any action. Got, the slope stabilization is done. Final invoices have been put together. Um, right. I gave you a copy of this one because this one came for Megan's time. You have a copy of it there. I just wanted you to approve it before I pay it. We received it in our office on the 20th of December. Um, the billing date is the 22nd of November, and it's um, Megan. Megan's time. Yeah, and Alex. For 560216. That's fine. Just, just run it through. Uh, okay. It's through. part of under the FEMA reimbursable. We've okay. already gotten one distribution. Thank you. I think a disbursement. Okay. And this is pending the next one that Carl's been working on. So. Yep. All right. That's fine. That's great. Yep. Okay, I'm going to skip over the mass road pavement. Have you all seen the picture of the? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. Looks like you I even hear they upholstered but the seat. God. Mike said they reupholstered the inside. All right. Yeah. So that is done. We have and to pay for yes. under out of the 2011. Yes, it's, at, it's off of the budget. Yeah. Okay, very it's good. Off the, it's off the budget gone. Yeah. I've I've requested we have a videotape of our uh, new truck played during a selectman's meeting so it's broadcast uh, you know live is it going to be is it right. going to be um, sponsored by this Gosstown sewer commission and the department of public works <laughs> i will ensure that uh, proper uh, comments for all those who paid for it are made you know thank you endorsements <laughs> yes. thank you okay okay Oh, yeah. You want to? Yes, I, I just will briefly say the year end financials. I looked at them this morning with the help of Ellen and getting me information. They are still in the process of working on them. Um, I did notice that the back of my truck was um, on there. Also, I noticed that the receipt of the money from the slope stabilization of $107,803 were on there. However, um, the trial balance doesn't balance, um, so and they are presently working on uh, funds that are encumbered. Um, uh, that seem to be a little bit high, so they they know they have to redistribute the encumbered funds under the the correct expenses. So there's a lot of work. They are still gleaning the figures. So to, to say to you, I, I can't say to you the fin here in financials are are ready. Um, it looks like we are right on target. Um, it doesn't look like uh, what I, I can't even speak to whether we're going to meet our budget or not. We have have met our budget, but we're very very close based upon what we have, and uh, that's the best I can tell you. The revenues are right where they always have been. Uh, they look very healthy, uh, especially in the, in the time that we're where we have right now. Uh, the expenditures are right online, uh, and I just have to wait and see where they're going to appropriate the encumbered money into what uh, expense I line items. And there's a couple of issues with revenue and postings that I question. All right, Chief, thanks for looking into that, Kathy. You're welcome. The year's only been over for two weeks, so it must normally take till the end of the month anyway, right? This is Absolutely. just take away. Oh, yeah. 
We're, they're just closing out the AP today. So nothing for unusual. 2011. Just right. Exactly. Okay. The, uh, and we're still waiting to hear from June George what the uh, November and December O and M. No, uh, I have those. You got those. You got yes. those today. It, they're in. The, it's in there. As a matter okay. of fact, for signature. But they're not on. They're not on the. Uh, yeah, they're I not on the expense report yet. They, they have been added. They will. Be there. Okay, and the billing just billing adjustments. The last line it says seven Main Street Monument Laundromat closed from fourteen TU two, and then I don't right. see anything after the two. Right, because I need to look further into that to make sure that we continue to um, charge them. You know what they should be charged, whether it's four treatment units or uh, based on two apartments that are there. and Because I wasn't quite sure exactly what the laundromat used as far as treatment units was concerned, so. We dealt with well, them in 2008. I found it, but this was just something they had submitted, which did, but I remember we, we, we they were in front of us in, I think, 2008. Well, if you they, talk to you, got to talk to the property owner because if you stop building them, they then they lose them and then they buy them back. They have to buy them back if they do something else. So okay. better better make contact with the owner. And, oh, I did. I've talked to John Young. Okay, and he, he wants to just drop it down on what the bare minimum he understands. Maybe, okay. he should, maybe he should put that in writing. Maybe we should put it in writing. Okay. We should, yeah, we probably should. We should. If you've had a conversation, follow up with him and say, you know, based on our understanding, so commission understands that you want to reduce this, you also are with me and hereby notified that you would have to buy back additional treatment units. You know, if, okay. You know, let him know. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I would be surprised if we already have sent that letter from when he was here before. Well, that's a, yeah, it, you're, Kathy yeah. may be right. In 2008, okay. he was here before. And I, right. yeah, I think we addressed that, him. but it would be good to confirm it again. Okay. Just Refreshes are always good. Just send a new one. Okay. Okay, you can have this. I don't think this is something to you, but it gives you a date. Oh, good. Okay. Around the time he was in before. Yeah, that was just before I came on. So, okay. Yeah. Um, you just have a couple of minutes. You have two sets of minutes to okay. Yes. Um, I know it just says one, but but they're also there. The um, the November, I mean the December twenty first, where you um, following the Cardillo. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting of November 8, 2011. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from December 21st, 2011 uh, for the non-public session as drafted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Would you like to take a recess for about five minutes? Can, uh, turn it off. Turn it off a while. Just want to turn it off for a few minutes. Yeah, I just got a very, very short recess. Excuse okay. me. Okay. My, a Andrew. Andrew. Oh. Can you just go off camera? Sure. Off there, minutes. five minute off. recess here. Five minute yeah. recess so people don't have to see your standing. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, 7 08. We're back in public session. Uh, next agenda item is uh, the Mass Road paving. Uh, Mike, would you like to give us a, just an update on what's going on with that? Um, well, no definitive decisions have been made as far as you know, when the paving would be done or how that would even be facilitated. Uh, I did update the spreadsheets that were put together previously in, in terms of the uh, estimated cost for paving if you went with one and a half inch milling and overlay that's on the first sheet and I'll hand these out and then the second sheet is um, the cost based on one inch milling um, and overlay and then that's further broken down by um, what would be the estimated cost if it's within the contract based on Cardillo's prices um, that we receive. And then what would the cost be based on the prices that the town has?
You want to walk us through this? Sure. Um, maybe it would make sense to hand this out there. This is a Just the grinding. I don't think it makes a difference if you grind an inch or an inch and a half. That's taking stuff off, not putting stuff oh, okay. on. Right. Okay. That doesn't change. Okay, first page. Um, it says Cardillo option. The, this is the estimated cost for doing the uh, full width overlay option. The milling quantity of 10,000 square feet is, is roughly based on doing um, an eight foot strip along each curb so as to maintain the curb reveal. Um, I think most of the other items are fairly self explanatory. So the Cardillo option is based on the, the unit pricing that we received back in the fall from Cardillo if they were to do the work. Um, and then the town option below that is the, based on prices that the town has. Uh, so if that were done outside of the contract, if you will, uh, that would be the cost. Based on what isn't accounted for already, and, and that may be subject to change, I don't know. But, um, we're showing right now on that uh, contract uh, the cost summary, project cost summary, 24000 and change available within the loan, the SRF loan for the ARA funding. So that number is up, up at the very top of each sheet, contract balance from ARA, from ARA approved, 24197 And then there's an estimate in there for additional police uh, details and so forth. So the the total cost, if you will, for doing the one and a half inch uh, milling and overlay is 341,800, 341, roughly. And based on the way DES approves full width paving as opposed to trench width paving, they only make 50% of that eligible for funding under the SRF program. So 50% of that would be eligible for funding under the SRF loan. Now, in terms of the ARA match, the ARA match is 50% forgiveness on the SRF loan principal. So again, half, half again. So the portion that's eligible potentially, I should say, potentially for the ARA money is the 85450 based on this estimate here of um, 24197 of actual you know, our money available in the contract. Um, then the 50000 that the town would contribute, and then an estimated credit of 15000 for the cost of paving the trenches, uh, service connections, trenches that was already done. Are still in the contract, I should say. Uh, the bottom line for the sewer commission in this first scenario would be the two sixty-seven six. Well, that that fifteen is that if they is Cardillo agreed to that? No. That hasn't been negotiated. And that fifteen, that I don't, that seems a little light to me, but you know, keep going. Yeah. It probably is. That's something that, that Bob had calculated based on his quantity takeoffs, and it, it may be light. It's something we'd have to look at. 
um, on this first sheet, the town option, it's pretty much the same scenario, except that the unit prices are somewhat different. So the total cost is 279.2 instead of 341.8. Um, there wouldn't be any error contribution since that would be <coughs> outside the contract. And then again, the town contribution, 50,000 and <coughs> estimated credit for the trench pavement. So the uh, cost of the sewer commission would be like 214. <coughs> On the second sheet, the second page, can I stop for you for yeah, one second? Sure. The You're figure good. that you have for the total cost is, is not 341 It's 336.56. Okay. Yeah. 3306.56. Okay. Might have been a glitch in this part. Um, Okay, you're, you're just adding the numbers in that column what, above? above. What, yes, I, I added them down. Okay, you have to also include the 11,136 from police details up above. See at the top of the sheet? I factored that in as well. So that's how you got 341792. Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't factored in on this. No, what I did, this, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, that's not, you that, this wasn't factored in on this one. So yeah. you just add these numbers, you're right. going to get one value, but right. you also have to add in the 11,136 for the. Yeah, it wasn't added in on this one. It probably wasn't. That's, a, that's an older one. It is. Yeah. I was trying to yeah. match differences, yeah. and I didn't yeah. match. I, Okay. I updated this completely today. So this is right. one inch of one and a half inch. So we, are we away from the, okay. Am so I that's the milling though. That's not the pavement. That's the milling. Okay. The shim asphalt. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to cut out. No, well, this, what? This, what are you talking about? This includes the pavement. Yeah, there's a line item yeah, for the pavement. Her sheet said, you know, oh. she's saying how come one inch of milling costs the same as one and a half inch oh. of milling is because it's cutting out, it's not added, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's, it's a grind. Yeah. 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 The only way that would change is the square footage, not really the depth. But the one inch milling is a lot less than the one and a half inch. It's it's changing of the depth. Well, the, the milling the, the milling's the same, yeah, but the overlay is different, different because you're, it, you're replacing it. Yep. it with more. Right. The reason yep. we were talking about one and a half yep. inch to be other, the other thing, the other reason we were talking about it an inch and a half is because it was cooler weather coming on. We were trying to get this in the, in the fall, right. and it felt that the, if the cooler temperatures, one inch would not uh, anneal to the substrate well enough, so we went with an inch and a half. Okay. Yeah. Springtime is probably looking at the one inch option. Yeah, and then there was questions too that you know whether or not the, the one inch would stand up to the volume of traffic right. and trucks and everything on uh, Mass Road. So that was also part of the mix. So the second page or second sheet is, is really just an exact uh, repeat of the scenarios on the first sheet except it's based on one inch of milling instead of the one or one inch of milling and one inch of pavement overlay versus one and a half so that's the difference <coughs> so by all intents and purposes it appears that the town option represents a <coughs> savings <clears throat> now the fourth alternative, if you will, if you consider these four, actually the fifth alternative, if you consider these four different alternatives, <coughs> would be to um, have Cardillo do the pavement restoration under the existing contract that they already owe you, you know, which would be trench width. They would have to cut a foot beyond the trench on each side uh, and then do the milling and overlay trench width. So that is still an option. Well, if they don't do that, how come we're only getting a fifteen thousand dollar credit? That credit is that's different. There's eighty nine thousand dollars that was in the contract for the trench pavement repair. The fifteen thousand was the estimate of cost based on the bid prices from Cardillo of the pavement repair that they did within the street just for the trenches, the uh, service, ser trenches. service trenches, not the main line, 
mainline is excluded from that. So it's just the building service. Trenches. Well, if they don't do the, where's the credit for the for the the main line? If they if they don't, we do haven't the spent truck. it yet. You haven't spent it. Yet. We haven't paid it. Yet. Uh, so you're not carrying on the, the. You're not carrying it on your balance sheet. You're not carrying that eighty nine. It's noted on the project cost summary. If you look at the footnotes, item three. There's eighty nine thousand six hundred eighty five dollars in the existing contract as bid for so pavement repair. Essentially, what you're saying, okay. this, if you take the, if you yeah. take your sheet, so that's where it's accounted. For. Okay. So it's not really a credit. It's just eighty-nine thousand dollars. We're not going to give them, so to speak. Right. Right. It's unspent at this point. Right. Okay. The yep. other thing was when he, you know, when we had him in here, uh, you know, the last time we met, and I started talking the pave, pavement. I said, we, you know, we we sort of got to get that straightened out before we settle everything, and. You know, I was under the impression that this was this was already already settled. You know what yeah, I mean? it isn't totally resolved now. Okay. There's still some damages on side streets and stuff, and, and that's a, that's also an issue be, as well, which I hadn't brought up. That has to be taken. In that well, way. I sort of thought we were beyond this. Was, you know, I thought I, I sort of thought I was missing something. I said, well, what about the pavement? You know, is that well, no decision. Yeah, this this has been presented several times, but no firm decision has been made as to which way the town is actually going to go with this. Well, when everyone was saying, "Yeah, we're all set with the pavement," we're all set with the pavement. I thought we're all set with the pavement. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's that's neither here nor there. Doing this in optimum weather, you know, springtime conditions and. Uh, milling and tack coats and everything like this, I you know I'm I'm inclined to lead to the one inch milling versus the one inch and a half milling. Of course, DPW we're gonna have you know accept that. Um, some people at DPW still prefer the inch and a half. Um, the one inch milling is done on many many roads throughout the state. Yeah. Right. But there's no. Is there a difference? Cost between one inch and one and a half inch milling. Yes, that's yeah. page two. Is page two is one inch of milling with one inch of pavement, for 186,000. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Page one has it for an inch and a half for 267, and I got numbers that show up 252 on that. But anyway, so just using more pavement to pave the road. Yeah, right. 50 percent more pavement. Yeah, so you end you're up. You're talking pavement. Okay. When you, you're going to mill only an inch, and you're only going to put an inch of pavement. Right. In. Yeah, here's where the. I, I know the difference is in the pavement. I, I'm looking at the one and a half inch milling costs twenty three thousand, and one inch milling costs twenty three. That's just to cut it down. Right. Then when you get down here, you got to pave it back. Milling is milling. Mill I know, but now you're yeah. going into pavement. I'm being. The unit, the, 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 I the, understand the, what you're saying, when well, you said milling. That's because the units are pavement. It's well, not I'm talking about, about the not difference. Not by a cubic yard, it's by a square yard. But the difference to me is in the pavement cost, well, not into the milling cost. It isn't. I'm just talking about one inch milling versus inch and a half milling because you're going to fill it one in. Okay, one inch of pavement versus inch and a half pavement. Yeah. Page one is one inch and a half of pavement, and page two is one inch of pavement. There you go. Oh, okay. So they go down. Go down. Right. When it says an inch and a half of milling, you got to fill the hole with an inch and a half. That's what. Here's where the. See here, it's you know one and a inch, one and a half top overlay. One inch. Yeah. Top overlay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the uh, the milling cost is the unit price is just based on square yardage. Yeah. Whereas the paving cost is based on tonnage. I'm with you now. Yeah, volume, if you will. And Carl did send me an email today and asked what the status of the paving was. <laughs> Everybody's asking. Such um, I what weren't we at a point that we we're gonna we went this and we we're gonna hold off on this till springtime and uh, and then have a pavement meeting to resolve all this a workshop. Well, I thought there was gonna be a workshop in between. Yeah. Well, yeah. there was gonna be a meeting with public works. Right. For sure. To sit down and resolve all this, and that's what. Right. Which yeah. includes Carl, you know, public works, Carl, and something to discuss. 
You said somewhere around February. Around February, that's what you. Okay, I wasn't. Yeah, I, I would suggest the sooner the better, because uh, from DES's perspective, on the ARA money, uh, they'd like to have everything spent by the summertime. Uh, I don't know what that means exactly, but basically the August September time frame, they'd like to have everything completely spent and completed. Uh, technically, under the hour rules, uh, they have until, recipients have until December of 2012 to spend the hour money, but DES would like to get everything done if possible before that, just to give themselves a couple of months for the paperwork stuff. So the pavement wasn't really shovel ready? <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't plant ready. Yeah. Shovel, so what, ready, what, shovel ready is a nebulous What is the term. longevity of a, uh, what, what would be the difference in possibly the longevity of a road when you have the difference between a one inch and a one and a half inch? That's so hard to say. It. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's based on when the, what's underneath it for support. It's based on traffic. What do they have, traffic down, what do they have down there now? The do types you know? of traffic. Oh, yeah. Five inches. In places there was five, or some places there was more. Than some that. places yeah. there's more. Yeah, you know, thickness down there right now. So I'm I'm comfortable with a one inch. I think I am too. I mean, I, I think my aspect is what I do a lot of this now in one inch. Oh, just have to be yeah. in the time of February and just hash it on there. Hash it open. I, I, I think it's, it's yeah. just fine. I mean, the idea is to get what, five years. Yeah. You can't cut back into it, you know, for five years. So. One inch will take you long before. Well, doing it properly, you get doing it, prime thing. coat, and putting it down will get you long, be, uh, way up beyond right. five years. That's what I was going to say. So still the traffic loops are still going to be prepared. Too. Well. Yeah, we they do. can still be repaired, right. and, you know. And a lot of times, like I've said before, we just they just redial them up with the overlay. They don't recut them every time. The, the so. permanent installation of traffic loops is accounted for in the contract already. Um, there's also temporary traffic loops that have to be put in. We are still trying to get uh, pricing on that from East Coast. East Coast. Well, both. Um, there's one number from East Coast, and there's another number from Cardillo, and they don't agree. <laughs> what a surprise. Trying to resolve that. But <laughs> for, the, for the purposes of this contract <coughs> cost summary, um, I included $2,000 as part of uh, change order number four to address the temporary loops. The permanent the installation of permanent loops is covered as the unspent, still part of the unspent in the contract. Yeah, Megan had, uh, or you had forwarded us emails regarding the correspondence with the loops as to, and Bob was working on it, uh, how they're handling them in front of Hannaford. That one was installed. It was. Okay. Yeah, there you're, was you're two, the two temporary there? loops that were put in already. Why don't we set up a little, uh, I don't know, workshop to discuss the paving, the treatment units we were talking about, the conflict between the ordinance and the table if there is a conflict, maybe we just get together in the next couple of weeks and sort of you know, go over those those items, and then we'll be prepared to make some decisions at the next meeting. Sounds like a real plan. And then I'll keep going to meet here at the garage. It doesn't make any difference to me. Five minutes off. We got the pavement. Talk about that. I'm sorry. You better off talking to DPW with Megan and Carl anyway. Okay, why don't you talk to Megan and Carl and go through well and try to set some, something up in the next, uh, you know, next two weeks if, if possible. I, I do owe Carl an email, a response to his email. I didn't have one for him today. I was waiting until the meeting tonight. So as part of the response, I can offer maybe some dates or something within the next week or two weeks that 
see if he's available. Or yeah, just hope we can wrap everything up in one meeting. Yeah, exactly. I already have a conflict with you meeting Thursday, but I'll see what I can do. I'm supposed to be in Florida again. And after Taking that, a boat? No. a week from Thursday? Yeah. I'll see if I can fly back on Wednesday. Or maybe we can, like, maybe if, like, a week from today or something in the afternoon. I'm going down Saturday to Friday. This Saturday? Yeah. How long will you be gone? Oh, so I was planning on going till Friday. I don't know. When. Next week? Yeah. yeah. But that meeting on Thursday is important. So. I mean, what's important is everything's important. Well, unless you and I talk about it before. Let me see what I can do, though. No? Yeah. yeah, okay. Let yeah. me see what I can do. Balls of my core. Throw some dates at Carl, so I just said to Carl, we want to have yeah. a meeting. The week after game. next would be better for me as far as the... All right, I'll, I'll note that. Next week would be good. I'll see what I can do about next week for this. Well, last week of February, or January, first week of February. Is about yeah. Okay. I'll note that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll CC everybody. Okay. What's that? Get the TV in. And we all set on uh, you know, giving adjustments. Yeah. I don't think we have a motion. Just want to make a blanket motion to approve the filling adjustments. Yeah, we have that one from the letter on a laundry match. We'll make a blanket. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we'll make a blanket. Yeah. Uh -huh. 